Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome to Cinderella Phenomenon. So, <laughs> my friend Grace asked me to play this, and so here I am. I am playing it now. Thank you, Grace. Love you, boo. I have no idea what this game is about at all. <laughs> I just uh, picked it up off Steam, and it is free. It is free to play. So, please go get it yourself and help support the developer. And yeah. Um, I will tell you that from the starting intro, the song <laughs> was not that great. So honestly, I have no idea what to think about this right now. <laughs> I'm kind of regretting it <laughs> already. But let's start. <laughs> Uh, tutorial? This is your first time playing a Ren P? No, this is not my first time. So, no. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. One was the crystal Lucas, or Lucius, protected by the ruler of the fairies. The other was the crystal of Tenbarium, or Tenbrarium. Or Tenebrarum? I have no idea. <laughs> Which was watched over with, or by the high leader of the witches. The Lucius uh, was sustained by love, happiness, and joy. The Tenebrarium was fear, or by fear, anger, and hatred. The fairies and witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. They regulated the powers of the crystals in order to maintain balance between darkness and light. For there can be no joy without sadness, no courage without fear. The kingdom was at peace for a time. Then one day, a traveling bard decided to write stories, tales of the magic and wonders of the kingdom. He named these stories fairy tales. In fairy tales, the light always emerged victorious and true love was the usual reward. The fairy tales spread further than could have been predicted. The humans of the kingdom began to believe that fairy tales were true, and that the magic of the witches was inherently wicked and cruel. The witches became hated and feared. Eventually, they were hunted like animals. The witch hunt. The high leader of the witches, in all of her anger, created the fairy tale curse. You think we are wicked, so be it. Just as you have taken our, happy, our happily ever afters, we shall take yours. The witches used the fairy tale curse to attack humans indiscriminately, ultimately throwing the kingdom into chaos and darkness. The ruler of the fairies, the Lucius Bearer, sought to regain freedom. Or not freedom, peace, sorry. But the witches were blinded by their hatred for the humans, who were responsible for the witch genocide. A terrible war, the Great War, began. Eventually, the ten or the tenebrarium, or tenebrarum bearer, the high leader of the witches, was finally defeated. The tenebrarium I'm gonna have a hard time saying that word every freaking time. The tenebrarum was lost. Peace was restored, and the light once again triumphed. But darkness can never fully disappear. It waits in the shadows patient for when its time will inevitably return. Contract. Sign here. Lucette? Uh, how about not? <laughs> Let's go with, um, hmm. Let's go with Frump. No, that's too much like Trump. Uh, how about, uh, Crotus. <laughs> no, that's actually a nice name though, but no. <laughs> how, I don't want to use Elizabeth because we already used that for amnesia. Um, how about, let's see, she's a princess, so, princess, <laughs> um, I was gonna, I was thinking 
thinking Felipe, <laughs> because that sounded really funny in my mind. <laughs> Princess Felipe! <laughs> no. <laughs> um. Marcorus. No. Fine, you know what? Let's just use an actual, like, real name. Melody. Prologue. Ice Princess. My name is Melody Riella Britton, or Brighton, I don't know, Britton, I guess. Daughter of King Gennaro Britton III. I am the crown princess of the kingdom of <laughs> Angel. At last, there was, or that was who I used to be, or at least that was who I used to be. But that was before yesterday, when I became the victim of an infamous fairy tale curse. Oh, she's pretty! Everyone has forgotten my birthright. Now I am nothing more than a lowly peasant. I feel like I'm stuck in a nightmare. But no, this is my reality now. I still have no idea what I must do to break the curse. I close my eyes and remember that day. It had started out like any other day. Have you heard? Another person was cursed! I am on my way to the dining hall for breakfast, when I stop and listen to the sound of hushed voices. There are two maids standing next to each other with brooms in hand. These two are slacking off again. That's terrible! What fairy tale curse was it? They say it was Pinocchio! Pinocchio? The fairy tale with the lying boy whose nose grows longer? That's awful! <laughs> you know, more and more people have been getting cursed lately. You think those wicked witches are up to something again? I thought the fairy tale curses would stop after you know who was defeated. Oh, is this Harry Potter? <laughs> you two were hired to work, not talk. <laughs> Ooh, we're sorry, your highness. As can only be expected from the likes of them. Another fairy tale curse. The fairy tale curse started spreading even before the Great War began. I do not have much interest in its effects even now. After all, most humans probably deserve to get cursed. The victims are weak. Angel would be better off without the dead weight. If it were up to a mother, the cursed would have been banished from Angel the instant they fell prey to it. But mother is not here anymore. And she will not come back. Ever. Princess, the king and queen are waiting in the dining hall. I am on my way. The king, Ophelia, and Rod are the pres er, are all present in the dining hall. Someone is conspicuously missing, but I ignore their absence. Uh, good morning, Melody. Uh, good morning, Your Majesty. Good morning, Melody. Melody. Ophelia. Ophelia Windensov. Every day I wonder why my father, the king, married a lowly baker. She could never be a true queen, for she pales in comparison to mother. I take my seat next to the king and look up at the person sitting opposite of me. Oh, hello! <laughs> Rob Benedict Windensov, my stepbrother, as bored and quiet as usual. Oh, he's our brother, never mind. <laughs> He is two years uh, he is two years my junior and is the younger of Ophelia's children. He is a mute or he is mute and uses a plush bunny to voice his thoughts. It was apparently given to him by a fairy. He minds his own business and is easy to deal with. But his older sister My eyes go to the empty seat beside him. She is probably the most infuriating person I have ever had the displeasure of knowing. Speak of the devil, right? I'm so sorry I'm late. I was reading and forgot the time. 
And here she is. Uh, good morning, dear father, mother. Good morning, Rod. And good morning to you too, Melody. It is a beautiful morning, isn't it? <laughs> oh no, why are these names so hard? Uh, Mel... Mel... I don't know how to say her first name. I don't care! <laughs> the bitch! <laughs> Rod's older sister and my stepsister. She acts as if we are blood. As if she were... Or as if she too were born a princess. As if she could be a crown princess. Perhaps steal my place. I will never let that happen. Now that everyone is here, let us begin. Butlers glide inside with silver trays to carefully serve us breakfast. So... A mel a melody? I don't know. <laughs> you were reading the fairy tale books that the king brought you. Oh yes, there are so many, and they are all so wonderful! Thank you so much. Oh, whoops. Ah! <laughs> Thank you so much, Father. I am happy that you like them. I love them. It's so strange that the library didn't have any of them to begin with. That's because Mother hated them. She had all the books burned. But why? They are such charming stories. Fairy tales mislead humans into believing that they can have things they do not deserve. Fame, riches, love, happily ever afters. And when their wishes do not come to fruition, exactly as they want them to, the humans blame the witches for granting them in the first place. What are you implying about the witches, Melody? The atmosphere shifts, the air in the room growing heavy. I continue to eat. Perhaps witches are not responsible for the evil in this world. Perhaps humans aren't the cause of their own downfall. Have you any idea what you are talking about, child? Witches have caused nothing but pain and suffering to this kingdom. Even now, they still spread the fairy tale curse to our innocent subjects. The truth is, I know very little about the time the witches had free reign over uh, Angel. <clears throat> I was very young then, and Mother forbade me to leave the palace, so, you know, sometimes even my room. I know nothing of the people's supposed pain and suffering. Mother kept me away from everyone, and so I cannot bring myself to care. How do you know the cursed are innocent? Our people have been toiling day and night to rebuild Angel after the Great War. Our people are the kingdom's foundation, and I am endlessly grateful for their determination and resolve. Every day I wonder what your mother taught you about. Leave mother out of this! Dear, please. Melody, darling, your father didn't mean to- I am not one of your children, Ophelia! I do not need your sympathy! I- Melody, you will show your mother respect. Um, she is not my mother. I set down my fork and knife and stand up. I am done, excuse me. My father and I have never got on, but our relationship has significantly worsened since he married the baker. My father, the king. It has been 17 years, and I still- and I never have felt any love from him. He treats Emelin- or Emelingy- or Elema- ah, I don't know how to fucking say her name! <laughs> Melanie and Rod, who only entered our life one year ago, like his own children, better than he has ever treated me. This has been my life since Mother passed away four years ago. Mother was the only one that was there for me when no one else was. It, if it wasn't for the accident during the Great War, she would still be here. Why the sour face so early in the morning, princess? Oh, hello. 
<laughs> Let me guess, it's the king, the queen, or princess Melanie? Or is it all of them? I ignore his question. Fritz! What are you doing here so early? I'm running some errands for my father. Fitzgerald Aiden Leverton, son of the highest ki or highest knight of the Order of the Cal or Caldera? I don't know. <laughs> His father, Sir Alcaster, has served the royal family for many years. Sir Alcaster is one of the king's most trusted advisors. Three years ago, Fritz was assigned the honor of becoming my personal knight. His presence is the only company I could tolerate nowadays. You should wait in the throne room, then. <laughs> Thank you. Princess. Yes? You know, I haven't seen you smile once since I met you. Why is that of any importance? Still, I do hope to see you smile one day, princess. Well, I won't take up more of your time. I'll see you at ten. Ten? Don't tell me you've forgotten. Forgotten what? You're going to town today, remember? I deflate as the realization dawns upon me. It's been two days since the king issued the order. <clears throat> Melanie, I would like to or I would like you to accompany a Melanie on one of her town outings. Surely you could send maids with her instead. I would never or I would not have requested you to accompany her if I was going to send her with the maids. I want you to make an effort to get along with your sister. A step sister. She is your sister, and you will treat her and Rod as if they were your blood. Two days from now, you are going to accompany a Melanie outside. It has been four years since you last left the palace. Ever since then, you have locked yourself away. You barely leave your room. Uh, <laughs> Angel was the grip of the war back then. Or was in the grip of the war back then. But now the kingdom is safe and back to its former glory. I want you to see how beautiful Angel really is. Melody, princess must know her kingdom. Go with Melody, and she will show you the town that you only ever see through your windows. Is that an order? If it needs to be. Are we clear? Melody! Understood. The last time I left the palace was four years ago, when the king took me with him to check on the people after the Great War had ended. I shake my head, removing myself from the memory. I am safe here. Princess, are you alright? It won't be that bad. The town folk are good people. How can you be so sure? Times have changed. People change. That is precisely the problem. Mother never changed. Mother loved me until the end. Sometimes change is for the better, princess. I think you'll see that today. And if you'll excuse me, I shall see you later. Uh, Delora! Do you think witches are capable of bringing back the dead? I wish you could talk to me, you and the others. My dolls are my only friends. They are the only ones I can trust. Unlike humans, they will never betray me. They will never hurt me. They will always be there for me. The moment I saw Delora, I knew she was special. She was different, so elegant and realistic it was almost as if she was breathing. She was a gift from the king on my 17th birthday. I only started receiving dolls from him when Mother passed away. Mother does not believe in birthday celebrations, but every year at midnight a letter would appear uh, or under my door. 
It would contain instructions leading me through the palace on an adventure to a room filled with gifts, cakes, and sweets. A child's dream. I had been fascinated by the dolls, which had always held a little greeting card. The, er, a card with the words I love you on it, signed by M. The card would tell me to keep those celebrations a special secret, but I didn't need to be told that. Mother always found a way to show me she still cared. In her own way. The secret celebrations had stopped as soon as she had disappeared. Yes! Excuse me, your highness. The king has requested your presence. Uh, this better not be another lecture. Uh, tell him I'm on my way. I will see you later, Delora. Oh. Uh, good morning, your highness. Uh, Sir Mythos? Sir Mythos, the royal advisor. Father trusts him a great deal, just like he does Sir Alcaster. Every day you look more and more like your mother. I sometimes find Sir Mythos talking to Mother's portrait when he thinks no one is looking. He must have admired her a lot, but I cannot bring myself to think highly of him. There is something about him that puts me on edge. But I am all out of time for this episode, guys, so if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe.